Before I started the decking in the last video that we, we posted, I had uh, put my scaffolds up, and they're a, a hanging scaffold. It's something that I just build. It's pretty simple, and it's easy to, to put up. But for some reason, when I was talking about the scaffold and how I hung it and got it up there, it was blank in the camera, and we don't know just exactly what happened. So I'll turn you around and show you uh, what I've got for a scaffold. These are pretty simple. They're held up there with a three-quarter inch piece of all thread with some big nuts and washers on there. I put some bracing over against the cabin and put some screws in there. But these are simple. You can raise them up and down. The biggest part of raising them up and down is having to uh, pick up your scaffold board. They work really well. I've used these a lot of different times. Not the same ones, but some that, that I've built in years past. So I'll go inside and show you how I actually keep these connected to the house. What I did, I drilled a, a three quarter inch hole through a two before and put it over this piece of all thread and put a big nut and washer on there and just kind of snug that up. And down at the bottom, I put one screw right down there at the bottom into the log. When I take that out, I can plug that hole where the screw went in. But these hold really well. I started framing the gables. It's over D wall. It's uh, actually, I've got it completed as far as the framing goes. I'm using uh, two befores for my framing. If you remember, I held this, this set of rafters in an inch from the outside of the half log on the top. And my insulation board will set right down here. And then the, the siding will go down over this half log. I'm framing everything on a 16 inch center. I started at the center and just uh, plumbed down and then measured either direction on the plate that I put on top of the half log. And I also put a plate underneath the rafter and lined it up with the outside edge of the rafter. So everything lines up on the outside real well and also on the inside. You can see a row of blocks going across here. Those are cut in between the studs and that will allow me to have something to nail the board and batten to on the outside and on the inside. I went ahead and drilled for the electrical. It's not likely that I will have any electrical in this gable wall. It would be a sconce light if I put anything there, but it'd be difficult to uh, actually get up there to change the bulbs. We have that issue in our house. It's, we have three sconce lights on the, the gable in the living room, and it's just kind of hard to get to them to change the light bulbs. This area right here is framed out for the area of the place that the stove pipe will go through. I've opted to go uh, with just triple wall pipe and not try to build a, a masonry chimney because it would be pretty tall from the ground all the way through the peak. That would be a really, really tall chimney. And I'm not a stone mason. But I've got this framed up. I'm ready to start the, the framing over B wall. This gable will have a window in it. But when I start framing that, I'll set the camera up so you can see what I'm doing. With a window, if I happen to be up here and somebody comes up the driveway, I can see them coming. And I can also put a small window air conditioner unit in this window and cool the upstairs. I'm getting ready to start the framing over the B wall. I have uh, a two before, it's already cut to length and I've already got my electrical hole drilled that will line up with the electrical hole here on, on top of the half log. Now, to get the length of this, it's kind of hard to get your tape be lined up right exactly there. And you can see, this is on a 45, which matches the, the pitch of the roof, which is 1212. And I just took a, my steel ruler, and I just set it right there at the bottom of the rafter on the inside. And I made a pencil mark right here at the end. And I did that on the other end also. Now when to I measure this, I can just lay my tape right here and put this on 12 inches and measure to the other end. And uh, I have the exact length that I need. So I've got this cut and I've got some screws in it started. And so I can uh, anchor this down 
And I've got a, a mark here that I made that lines up with the outside edge of the rafter. Uh, this one is, these the gable rafters set in an inch so that I can put an inch of insulation board and just set right down on top of the half log. And I've got a mark down through there that I can line the outside of this plate. I can line it up on that and have it nice and straight. So I'll, I'll get you set up here and we'll get this down. this about every 24 inches. And I'm using three inch torque screws, getting it on the line here. I'm just guessing 24 inches. Doing the same thing with the little steel 12 inch ruler. I just put it right down there at the intersection and made a mark on the bottom side of the rafter here, which is will be 12 inches, and I can measure from the peak underneath the rafter. I can just measure that down to my line or to my mark and add 12 inches to that. And that will be my my total measurement. I have my skill saw set on a 45 degree bevel. I'll be cutting 45 degrees and 90 degrees cuts. Frame all of this in. It's one of the nice things about doing a 12-12 pitch roof. Your cuts are pretty simple. I'm using two separate skill saws. I'm just leaving this one set on 90. And that that keeps me from having to change the bevel back and forth. This one's ready to put up. To transfer the center of the peak down to my plate, I just use this old, well, it's just a straight edge now. It was a six foot level at one time. And I just set it up there and lined it up with the peak a level, my good level on the side of it that I trust, and got a mark down here on the plate so I can go from that center mark either direction and have all my stud layouts on a 16 inch center, which is what I like to use. I'm going to start off, instead of using the end of my tape on my layout here, I'm going to use 16 since I am using uh, 16 inch centers here. Now I can either put this on my center mark and mark it at 32 and then come back three quarters on either side of that. Or I can set the 16 on the far side mark. I hope this doesn't get confusing. There's a lot of people have their own ways of uh, doing a layout. Make it 32, 48, 64. There would be another little short one back here, but it's not necessary to put that little bitty one in, I don't think. And I can take my speed square, and I'll make an X on the side that the stud goes on. So I've got this side laid out, and I'll have to transfer this mark, this layout, up to the bottom of the rafter on the plate there. And I can just use a level or a plumb bob for doing that. I'm going to put a uh, 2030 window in the center of this gable. If you see a 2 and a little 0 with a line under it, and a 3 with a little 0, that means that the window is 24 inches, 2 feet, what this stands for 
and no inches and it will be three feet high and no inches so it's just a considered a 2030 or a 24 by 36 inch window and I've laid this out I've got an X here where my stud will go and an arrow to let me know that this is the layout that I'm using because there's another layout right here for a regular layout a 16 inch center and I will make this window opening 27 and a half inches it's 27 and a half inches from this line from this stud down to this stud and that will let me be able to put an inch and a half uh, trimmer on both sides of it and that will give me a half inch to play on now when I start framing this I'll explain why I leave myself a half inch I like a little bit of extra to be able to get the window in there and to be able to get it in plumb these studs will all be different lengths going down the rake the roof so what I'm doing I'm measuring from the, the plate at the bottom on top of the half log <clears throat> up to this mark that I made with my plumb bob and this will be the long point of the uh, of the stud it's a 45 degree angle and so I'll cut this angle of the stud first which just makes it easier and then I can just hook my tape on this and measure to the other uh, mark that I'll have to make and just make a square cut but for me it's just easier to go ahead and cut this 45 to begin with, you know, as when I'm cutting the studs, just do it first. I've got the bottom part of the window framed. I've got the piece that goes across here at the bottom and the, the three little pieces that this is on the, the center layout. I like to have a piece here to support this. This little short uh, cripple is what we call them. It's what I call them. And I nail it into the top and then into the back side of the stud. So I'm ready now to do the header, which will be the part or the piece that goes up here at the top. It'll go right, right across here. When I put a header together, I realize this is a little, tiny, little small header. Uh, I've got a piece of plywood that I put on that will actually be sandwiched between the two pieces, the inside and the outside. If it's got a crown to it, I like to put the crown up. If these pieces have a bow, this one has a slight bow this way. I always put those to the outside. It's, it's easier to... Uh, to pull this center down than it would be if this was turned over and I tried to pull the two ends down. It's just so much easier to to pull the, the bow out of the center. If they're opposite of each other, you can when you uh, connect the or put the screws or nails, whatever you use in the center of it, you can actually pull that flat. I'm using a combination square to line this up. I like to flush it on the top and get the ends good and flush with each other. This makes it easier to put in the, the wall when you do that. Then I can put it with some nails in. Put the two trimmers in piece right here and right here and I just anchored it with some screws I had to reset there because it slipped on me and I've got a screw down at the bottom on, on both sides just two screws to hold it in I don't put these in solid anchor them down tight until I set the window in there with these screws in here I can take them out and I can slide this over and plumb it up and bring it right up against the window so when I put the window in it's real snug in there I don't have a 
a lot of slack room there that I've got to fill up with drips of wood or shims or whatever. It just makes it much easier. Now I can put the header in that was set right up here and get it anchored in. Then I'll have one more little short stud that'll go down here to the top of the header. And a couple little pieces on the side here, right above the header, and I'll have this framed in. Alrighty, I got the uh, the gable over B wall all framed in. I've got the blocking as you can see across there. There was two little ones up there at the top of the header. And that'll give me something on the inside and the outside to nail the, the board and batten to. I'll be able to nail it every two feet. Now I've got to get some insul insulation board. I've got some found that's an inch thick. Anyway, I've got the gables all framed up. And when I put the insulation board on, I'll just let it go across the window. And then I'll cut that out later when I get ready to set the window in after I get the siding on. Mm -hmm. 